Nearly there, kitties. Here we are, number two. <laughs> You've all been so very patient. And I'm going to reward you now with a classic little story. I'm on a classic kick this year, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. But this one is one that I know all of you have heard before. New, old, young, ancient. Doesn't matter who you are, you've heard a variation of this legend. This is number two. The Stranger in the Passenger Seat. <laughs> When I was around nine years old, the young boy that lived across the street from me told me this story. He told it to me as a first-hand experience, but as the years have gone by, I've heard variations of it and realized that it may have just been an urban legend. All the same, it still truly gives me chills to think about it, as his mother backed up his account of the story. It was an overcast Tuesday afternoon and my neighbor Matthew had stayed home from school that day. He was asleep when his mother entered the room and told him that she had to run to the grocery store. He was not old enough at the time to stay at home by himself, so he had no choice but to go to the market with her. He rolled out of bed and threw on some clothes before heading to the car. His mother was in a hurry, hoping to be home before her other children got off of the school bus. She hurried Matthew through the supermarket and towards the cash register. Matthew bounded out of the store, racing ahead of his mother and her shopping cart toward the car. She had parked their beaten-up station wagon with the wood paneling on the sides fairly close to the entrance, as there were very few cars in the lot that day. But it wasn't until he was around ten feet from the car that Matthew saw it. He stopped dead in his tracks when he did. His mother stopped too. For there, in the passenger seat, was an old woman who appeared to be in a hospital gown or something of the sort. She was staring straight ahead, seemingly unaware that there were two people staring at her through the driver's seat window. Her hair was messy and disheveled, her skin was pallid. Matthew's mother grabbed his arm tightly and held on to it for a few seconds before she spoke. I want you to stay here. I'm just going to talk to her. This happened in a fairly small town in the early 80s, where many people left their car doors unlocked or the windows down, so the details of how the woman got into the car seemed pretty simple. His mother simply didn't know why. His mom approached the driver's side door, stopping about a foot from the car. She called in through the open window to the woman. Can I help you, ma'am? The woman's head swung around toward his mother quickly, and she smiled eerily at both of them. She did not respond, she just smiled, with an almost blank look in her eyes. Matthew caught himself take a step back, as his mom repeated, Excuse me, ma'am. Can I help you? It took a moment, but the woman finally responded. Her voice was shaky. Get in, she said, beckoning toward them. His mother quickly replied, holding up her hand toward her son as if telling him to stay back. Ma'am, I'm very sorry, but... Is there someone we can call to come get you? There was another pause before the woman replied. I live very close. I just need a lift home. Please. Get in. Again, she beckoned them toward the vehicle. Ma'am, I I'm sorry, but I can't give you a ride. But I would be happy to call someone that could come and get you, okay? 
The woman now seemed mildly agitated, and her retort was extremely forceful and sharp. Get in. Nothing about this felt right to Matthew, and apparently his mother felt the same way. She turned to her son and told him to run back inside and tell the manager to call the police. He ran. He told the manager exactly what was happening. And without taking a breath, they called 911. Not wanting to leave his mother alone outside with the seemingly unstable woman, Matthew dragged his manager with him back into the parking lot. His mother was still trying to negotiate with this woman, who was becoming more and more aggressive in her demand. Get in the car! As I've said, this was a small town, so the police arrived very quickly. Two male officers arrived on the scene in under ten minutes, and quickly approached Matthew and his mother to ask for the details. After getting the story from his mother, the officers approached the vehicle and began to speak to the woman. Ma'am, please step out of the vehicle. The woman did not respond. Ma'am, please step out of the vehicle. We'd like to speak to you. Still nothing from the old woman. The officer motioned toward his partner, who drew his weapon and nodded. He approached the passenger side door slowly. Ma'am, he put his hand on the handle. Let's do this the easy way, okay? He pulled it. The door opened. Now step out of the car. She looked at him, wild-eyed, but said nothing. Now the door had swung all the way open, and the officer placed his hand on the woman's arm and slowly pulled her up and out of the vehicle. And then chills went up Matthew's spine. Not when he saw the first officer drag the woman out of the vehicle. Not when she locked eyes with him and smiled that awful smile. It was when the second officer revealed what the woman had been sitting on. A small hatchet. To this day, I still think of Matthew and his mom, and those chilling words, get in.